Today's project is going to be a car carrier. So it's got a truck and a tractor trailer and it's got four cars. There's a, a ramp that can go to the bottom and the top to load the cars on and off. This should be a lot of fun. Uh, for the kids, uh, it should be. A, it's it's a lot of fun to make too. That's what we're going to start on today. It comes from ToyMakingPlans.com. I've mentioned them before. I'll be sure to mention them again because I like their plans. These are complete. They have everything you need. You have a picture that shows you what the project looked like. Here's another one where it shows you a completed one. It's a page that gives you a diagram of how to put everything together. This is not a complicated one though. And then there are plans with, there are patterns that you can use to cut out each piece. So let's get started with preparing some stock. I've made this set before, the car carrier, and plan to make it again. It's a good item. I've sold it online and in, the, in my retail store. And so because I've made it over and over, rather than print out patterns every time, some of these are pretty simple, like the tractor. These are three quarter inch thick parts. I'm just gonna lay them out on some three quarter inch material. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna make four sets. So I'll need four of these and there's two needed of this, so I will make eight of those. Those are my three quarter inch parts. Then I'll have the fenders for the truck are half inch. I need two of those for each, so I'm gonna to have to make eight. And for the, the ramp is a quarter inch thick. I need number nine blade in there. So it's gonna take me a few minutes, but that's one and the Quite a few to go. Same thing over and over. Uh, I laid them out on the wood so you can see there's not very much waste here. This particular piece, when I'm done with it, whatever's left here will be scrapped. It won't be, there won't be anything useful. Takes a few minutes more to trim the patterns, but it's worth it to spend a little bit of time to do that. To use as little wood as possible. On the scroll saw, you want to. Let the blade do the work. You need to use one hand to hold the piece down, and then you need the other, once you both of them to some degree, to guide the piece to follow the lines. I have a lighted magnifier, which comes in handy. And depending on how good your vision is, you may not need it, but as you get older, you may, and even if your vision is is really good. These aren't big parts. These are relatively big parts. When you get into some of the smaller parts, the magnifier could really come in handy. All right, I'll do some more cutting on this. I'll come back the next time there's something else. The vehicles for the car carrier call for a 930 seconds hole for the axles. We have a drill press. That's good way to do it. It's fast, it's efficient, it's accurate. You know you're getting a 90 degree hole, which is good. You want the axle to go through at 90 degrees to the body, otherwise uh, the, the wheels won't turn quite as smoothly. So I'm going to spend a little while drilling all these holes. And then the next step would be to take the rest of these parts to the scroll saw. Start with the cars. Each one of them has a window. Actually, one of them has three. I think it's supposed to be a van. So we'll cut those out first. 
So each set has three cars and one truck. There's the first car. So I got 11 more cars, four pickup trucks, and then four tractor trailers to go. The cars are all going to be the same, so I won't show any more of those. When I get to the tractor trailer, I'll show that. This blade is starting to slow down a little bit, which tells me it's getting dull. So before I toss it, I thought I would do some quarter inch items this is these are the two sides there well there's one there but there's two sides like this to each one of the trailers and um it's clogging down a little bit on three quarter stock but it'll go right three quarter in. inside one more interior cut Now there you go. That's one side for the trailer. Seven more to go. You may remember that I used a pattern for the body of the truck because it's a pretty simple outline. And I probably should do the same for the cars, but for, for whatever reason I haven't so far. Um, so let me cut one of those. This has got a, uh, oh, let me see, there's a straight spot there, you can see that'll be a good place to start because if you start on a curve, when you come back to the curve, you sometimes end up with a rough spot uh, where the blade comes out of the pattern. Got a number nine blade in there. Number nine. I think it's modified geometry blade. I really like those. That particular series of blades. They cut nicely, aggressively, but not too aggressively. And they don't leave much tear out on the bottom. A little bit, I get to find any blade that doesn't leave some tear out. And as you can see, they do a pretty quick job. On three quarter inch hardware, a little bit slower than a hardware. 
material that I'm going to be filming me. So, copper is a good choice. That's it for the truck body, and now all I have to do is cut out the window. That's the window. I will do the backs for the the wheel support for the, for the trailer. Very simple cut on that. This is a good project for a person that's new to the scroll saw. There's no really complicated cuts. I mean, it's only in cut, side cuts are for the windows on the vehicles and for the in-between section on the sides of the trailer and none of them are very difficult so it would be actually a good place to get some experience making inside cuts. That's the back piece, the wheel support for the trailer, three more trucks, three more of those and I've got a few cars left so I'll be busy for a little while yet on those. Every shop should have one of these handy little drill bit size guides. I don't know what you call them. Anyway, uh, it's this one's got everything from a sixteenth up to a half. These are quarter inch axle pegs, and they're going to be used to. There will be one in the front of the trailer, and that goes to the fifth wheel of the truck. These are quarter inch axle pegs, but if you Notice the quarter is pretty loose. So is this and so is that. That's too tight. So actually, and I want a good fit on this. Just a little tight, but not horribly. So that's 730 seconds. So I'm going to take the four bottom layers of that trailer and I'm going to put a 730 seconds hole in them for the axle pegs. So I've drilled those holes. And the blow up, blown up diagram here gives you exactly how to put this together. There's two pages, so you get a pretty good idea where to place everything. That's why I like these plans from toymakingplans.com. They really don't leave any questions unanswered. You know exactly what to do with every part. So we'll take one of these bottoms and one of the sides. I've made this before and I know from that the and from the diagram here that you want the front of this bottom to overlap out the front of the side a little bit. So I'll put some glue on the bottom. It's not quite even with the bottom. It's a little bit up from the bottom of the side. Again, you'll be able to see it easily from the plans. And then the top Because of the way this thing angles, the top starts right at the front 
of the side and then goes just about to the back. Actually a little bit of a, an overlap of the back. And not even with the top of the side, it goes down a little bit. You want a little bit of a, a lip there to keep the cars in place. Alright, that's it. And then there is a little part here that goes on the back of each of those and the, the, the ramp that the cars use to go up and down onto the back of the trailer will rest on that. I'm not going to put them on just yet. I'm going to set this one aside. I've got four of these to do so I'm going to do the other three. Let that dry for a while before I come back to it with any more parts. There's the tractor and each one of them is going to get two fenders. You need us to do that by hand. Now the thing I usually do with with these is to make sure the fender is in the right place. I get a one inch wheel which is what it's going to take. Put it on an axle and then I place the fender here so that I know the wheel isn't going to touch. Actually, if this one, yeah, that one is nowhere, nowhere near close. Sometimes you get ones that are tricky and you've got to be really careful with the placement. I've had trucks or cars I've put together and after they were done and it was time to put the wheels on. They rubbed against, and I uh, they rubbed against another part. So put the fender on each side, like that. And usually, what I let them do is I'll put one side on. I'll let them dry, and then in a little while after they've dried, I'll flip them over and do the other side. Now we're coming to the cars. There's three cars and a truck that go on the back here. And I've made this before and what I found helpful is to cut out the half, of, well the patterns are the other half of the page or two-thirds of the page probably. And then here's the one of the cars and that will be this one right here. And the, there are two different shapes for the fenders. That particular shape fits this one. So I pulled, I pulled four sets of fenders and four of the cars. And I'll put the fenders on one side. And like I did with the tractor, I will let the glue dry on that side and then I'll do the other side later. We know that from the pattern which side is the front and which is the back because it's not the same. And once again I will take two wheels and two axle pegs and make sure that there's going to be clearance there, which there is. And I'll put the glue on this piece. Spread it around a little my finger. good. Three more of that car and then two more cars and a pickup truck to go. I mentioned this in other videos that I built this spray paint booth out of scrap plywood and this room used to be a dark room back in the days of film photography. 
as a lazy susan so that I can easily get all sides of whatever I'm painting. You may be able to hear it in the background. There's an exhaust fan just about directly above this. Um, you still want to wear a mask. Painting is not my strong suit, but I've gotten better at it over the years. You want to put on a light coat and let it dry and then come back. Okay, that rolls okay. Get some more wheels. So we've got tractor trailer. Four car three cars and a pickup truck, various colors. You can paint them any color you like. As I mentioned back in the beginning, this is color I colors I used the first time. Rather than change all the photos on my website, I use I use the same colors again. Nothing difficult about this, some inside cuts, but none of them were really difficult, none of them were complicated, none of them were especially fussy. So this would be a good project for someone that's still learning to use the scroll saw. If you like the project, please give me a thumbs up, comment if, if you have any comments, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more, if you would like to see more projects like this, or if you would like to see a different type of project, mostly scroll saw oriented, please leave me a comment.